Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. I like to welcome you all to the show. Well, family, another case of white privilege has just taken place in Florida with former Trump campaign manager Brad Parscale. Now, they on CNN released a somewhat edited video on uh, the confrontation so-called, which wasn't really a confrontation at all, between Brad Parscale and the police department, right? Apparently, his wife uh, used uh, her neighbor's cell phone because she left hers in the house. She said that Brad uh, Parscale was acting uh, sort of a bit crazy. He had barricaded his himself in his house uh, with guns. Uh, apparently, he had about 10 guns, right? So she called the police, told him the situation. Guns uh, was involved. Uh, police showed up. Uh, he came with his hands out to his side. And uh, so the police told him to get on the ground. Get on the ground. But you could tell it was kind of orchestrated. He said, well, I, I didn't do anything. And the police gave him this weak tackle. I mean, it was pathetic tackle. Brad Parscales hit the, hits the ground, and he's saying, "I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything." And you can hear one of the police officers tell him, "Don't worry, we're going to take care of everything." And they um, nicely put the handcuffs on him. And I was like, when I first saw it, and um, he came out, and I saw these officers rushing up to him, uh, about four officers. I said to myself, wow, they finna beat the shit out of Brad Parscale. He's getting ready to get black man, you know. Hey, I mean, the situation calls for it. A uh, gun was involved, uh, 10, his wife calls, she's panicking. How many uh, minorities, black people, brown, called the police when a family member was acting erratically and wound up dead? I said, oh, she called the police. Here they come, they getting ready to tear him up, right? And they gave him a weak tackle, and they handcuffed him, and it was over with. And in my mind, I said, well, damn, why they can't do the same thing with everyone else, with all the different races? Why they just can't, you know, do, do the same tactic? Tackle him. You see he didn't have any uh, weapons on him. They tackled him, handcuffed him, and that was the end of it. But for some reason, when it's dealing with a, a, what they call, quote, unquote, minority, even though we are the indigenous, what happens? The takedown, the foot to the face, the knee to the neck, the blow to the back, the kick in the stomach, the repeated punches to the face, you know, and then either you're going to get choked out, you're going to get shot, or they're going to inject you with something that, that will cause brain damage like they did with Elijah McClain, and there you go. I said, wow. Every day on the news, I'm looking at white privilege. Had he been anyone else, he'd have been beat up. They would have put the sticks to him, the knee to the neck, kicked him in his stomach, punched him in his face, beat the back of his head, you know, like they do minorities. But, I okay, I guess it was real because it was a weak takedown. They were actually kind of nice to him. You know, it wasn't anything violent about it. It's like, wow, okay, well, there you go. And I'm, you know, seeing it with my own eyes. You know, what 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 can we say? What can you do? This this is where we at now. So for those of you who's going to the uh gun formation on October third in um Lafayette, Louisiana, um I look at that more as a demonstration of Unity, because we have to unify uh, in a sense to where uh, we're concerned with one another and we're doing preventive um, maintenance in a sense to make sure that we're all on one page so certain things we don't have to keep repeating over and over again. Unity gives foresight and plan structure on how to combat certain things before it even take place or before it even becomes a situation 
because you're in, in unity, you have a plan, you have strategy, and you're organized, you know. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, Bro Pick Radio, we're not hearing you every day like we used to, but trust me, you'll hear me uh, multiple times a week, but we're in the process of filming EDP Part 2, so it's taking up a lot of my time and a lot of, uh, of my schedule, but I do want to appreciate all the listeners, uh, such as Miss C., uh, uh, Conscious Rock, the uh, MVM, A Tone Productions, uh, uh, Low Key, Gino, Brother Jamal, everybody that's out there, man. I really appreciate your listenership. Uh, high frequency, appreciate it. And so, you know, we're going to continue uh, to be strong. But I just wanted to share that with you all another example of white privilege. Same situations, but different outcomes. Family member calls police on a disturbed loved one, and that loved one, if they black or brown, wound up dead, beaten, or shot. White guy, a weak tackle, handcuffed, situation resolved, and he's off to the police station with his all his limbs, his functions. He's still alive. No harm, no foul. Wow. Vulpic Radio, we're out. Thank <laughs> you.